Hi, this is Eddie Beeson. You're listening to Breaking the Fourth Wall. I was Mandark in Dexter's laboratory. Ha 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 ha. You are listening to Breaking the Fourth Wall on Realm of the Mist Entertainment. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode. Today, I am joined by a very lovely lady who is... uh, well, you probably remember her from back when when we were kids and we were watching that, that movie, you know the one, that uh, got our hearts pumping. But um, today I am joined by Kelly Maroney. How are you today, Kelly? I'm great. Thank you. How are you? Thanks for having me, too. Oh, Thanks you're well. most welcome. I appreciate you coming on. Uh, I know we had a little bit of scheduling conflicting going on, but now we got this thing all hashed out and I got you here. So I'm going to ask you some questions. But the first one I want to ask you is, what is your claim to fame? (laughs) What is that movie that I'm talking about? I don't really know. It all depends. It could be Fast (laughs) Times or Ishmael. It could be Night of the Comet. It could be a a couple of things. So I'm guessing it's one of those two, but I don't know for (laughs) sure. It could be Chopping Mall. I'm not sure. Well, I was referring to Fast Times. Um, however, okay. you kind of jumped into the next part that I was going to bring up next is, you know, what, what all have you done? What are, what's your claim to fame? Oh, I've been accused of pushing ahead before. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I would say in a nutshell, my claim to fame is being, um, um, I, um, what, what do you call it? Let's see. Um, there's a lot of eye rolling going on. Like when I, when I started on the soap, I was a bad girl. And mm-hmm. basically I just called BS on everything. And I, I noticed that my characters tend to stop and go, excuse me, that's BS. That's, <laughs> that's basically what, what I'm known for. Um, so I'm always the one going, um, that's not true. Or, or you can't do that. Or, or why don't we stop this insanity? Um, but I'm known as the final girl. In the horror genre. Okay. Um, horror and sci-fi genre, which means I'm the one who lived at the end. So um, I sort of play like an every, uh, kind of like a normal person who's put in extraordinary circumstances. And I sort of uh, uh, represent for the audience what they hope would happen, which is in that, in that scenario, they would somehow, um, f- you know, figure out how to, how to survive. Gotcha. Okay. So if I, yeah, because I'm no expert, but see, so if I can do it, there's a really good chance they can do it, too. And it, and also, <laughs> um, it, I mean, yeah, and also for anybody that's afraid, it's like I sort of, um, um, they can sort of work through their fears with me because I make it at the end. So it's that's pretty much what I'm known for. Cool. Um, I play very quirky characters. Um, people seem to enjoy watching me get mad. So... <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, people like really like it is when I get mad. So, and I didn't notice that for a long, long time, but finally somebody pointed it out to me. So, uh, I gotcha. Um, that's, what, that's, that's what's relatable like about me, I guess. Well, so I mean, it go. makes sense. Yeah. Yep. Um, so you, you kind of said it a little bit there when you, when you were talking about them, but you've been in, you know, fast times and chopping mall and you, you've got, done some sci-fi, some horror, some, um, uh, different genres. What would you say your, your favorite genre would be? Oh, that's really hard. Cause I love comedy. I mean, there's usually a little blend like horror and sci-fi in my, my case, there's usually a bit of a blend. Okay. It's not, you know, it, it's, it's a, it's sci-fi in the sense that it's a natural disaster, and it's horror in the sense that there's zombies in the comma comet. It's horror in the sense that there's a lot of um, deaths in Chopping Mall, but it's sci-fi in the sense that it's a killer robot. Um, <laughs> okay, that's fair. <laughs> you know, so it's comedy in the sense of Fast Times at High is like a ha 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 comedy. That's kind of, you know, but I also love to do. Um, excuse me, I used to, um. Especially in the 80s, I used to do a lot of guest spots on shows, and that was a lot of fun for me, too. So 
Cool. Um, I don't really have a favorite genre, although I will say that the horror genre, the fans, are they're like a family. I've never seen anything like it before. <laughs> and they really stick together. It's kind of the, it's kind of um, people who, who've, well, in the past it was you were weird if you liked horror. Now it's cool. But right, right. Normally you were kind of, you know, in the minority and you found one or two other weirdos like yourself that enjoyed it. But now, of course, it's, it's hip to like horror. It wasn't always the case. So <laughs> you see a, a really staunch horror based fan base that they just love it and they dress up. There's a lot of cosplay, and they love the conventions, and they're extremely in, into what they're doing. They just have a passion for it, mm-hmm. and they're some of the sweetest, sweetest people on earth. If somebody will come up to you dressed as Satan and be really scary, and you say, "So, what do you do?" in like real time, and they say, "You know, I work at an animal shelter, or I'm a hospice <laughs> nurse." Yeah. You know, it's just, it's, so I, I just, in terms of. Um, living my life and doing the conventions and things like that, I would have to say that horror is like the, the warmest and the, and the sweetest. That's awesome. That's really cool. And, you know, like you said, you do conventions and things like that, so I'm sure you probably have some crazy stories about that. Um, I might circle back around to that in a minute, but I'm just wondering, what was it you just woke up one day and decided that you wanted to get into acting, or was this a, a process? How did this all start for you? Well, when I was a little girl, I wanted to be either a movie star or the Virgin Mary when I grew up. Oh, okay. <laughs> Virgin Mary was taken. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, if you got to choose one, I suppose. <laughs> um. So but I was I would watch old movies with my mom, and she loved watching them. Like you know, they came on late when I was supposed to be in bed, like Saturday, Friday, Saturday night, and just watching the expression on her face, it, it was a lot of times life really felt like a drag, you know. But in the in the everything was beautiful, and um, it just transported my mother, and I thought I want to do that for my mom. That's that awesome. Look on her face. But not only that, it's. Um, I grew up in the Midwest where, you, you know, you don't really get a lot of reward for expressing your feelings. You know, you might get your butt kicked. Mm-hmm. So, but in the, in the movies and on television, they explored their feelings. They had feelings. They acted them out. They were dealt with. And they weren't really in real life, in my experience. So I thought, you got to go to the place where you're going to be in hair and makeup all the time and you get to have, you know, have your feelings. Like you get to cry and you get to scream and you get to make people laugh. What's not to like and walk around right. in fabulous clothing. So I decided <laughs> I was going to be Betty Davis when I grew up. <laughs> that's, that's cool. I mean, who doesn't enjoy going on a shopping spree? I mean, I do. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Wearing the nice clothes and that, that's cool. I'm pretty, yeah. uh, and, and to, to want to, like you said, to want to do that for your mom, that's, that's very noble. I mean, obviously there's well, a little bit of wanting to do it for yourself, but still. Well, it's just, I think that all actors are, I mean, everyone has maybe has a passing fancy of being an actor, but it's not, it's easier said than done. So I think the people that are that really, commit to the craft and the ups and downs of, of the, of the actor life are, we, we um, crave connection and there's the drug of being an actor is that moment when you feel, when you know, you've connected well with the person you're the other actor you're doing the scene with. Absolutely. But mm-hmm. then also later on, you find out that it connected with somebody in the audience and, and made an impression on their lives. Yeah. That's, that's, a, that's, that's a thrill. I mean, that's, it's just like you think, well, you know, all the times when you sit around going, what is my life all about anyway? Had I known that it made, you know, something I did and, and maybe that just went on for the next job mattered to somebody else and meant something to them and they come up and tell me about it. And I think, well, you know, my life mattered, which is we all want our life to matter, you know, and, and yeah. that's act for actors, it's connection. Dang. And so, I, you know, yeah, that's the hook. So what would you say, well, what would your advice be to somebody that, 
you know, if somebody came up to you and said, look, I'm trying to break out into this into this world. I'm trying to become an actor or actress. What what would your advice be to them? Just learn your craft. Um, and oh, gosh, you know, things have changed so much that it's, it's not, you know, even when, gosh, I don't, I don't even know if it's anything like what it was when I was entering the business, but. Certainly the things that I was told entering the business are no longer accurate even. Oh, okay. Um, you, yeah, you have to follow your heart. You have to learn your craft. And you have to um, you have to know how to get along with other people. And you have to keep in mind that you are giving a service, not there to get something. You're there to give something. And that's true at any walk of life. And nobody teaches you that. You have to figure that out yourself. But right. If you don't walk in going, what am I getting out of this? You go... What am I here to give? Gotcha. And then, so I would just say that, you know, and like be on time, know your lines, don't bump into the furniture. It's not personal. <laughs> if you don't, don't get something that you didn't, yeah, if you didn't, if you didn't get something that you didn't want, it wasn't meant for you. Keep moving. Gotcha. It doesn't mean anything about you. It just meant you're too short, you're too old, you're too young, you're too pretty, you're not pretty enough. Mm-hmm. They already had somebody else in mind in the first place. It's not about you. Just keep moving. Gotcha. Forward. Okay. That's some good advice. I like that. Good. And so you briefly touched a little bit earlier saying that um, you were wanting to kind of bring that uh, feeling to your mom and all of that. So did you have a lot of support when you were like from your family and friends when you were entering into the acting world? Or were you just kind of on your own? I didn't tell a lot of people that I wanted to do that because um, we didn't have a theater department when I was growing up, and I was very, very, very shy. And so uh, I just, I would just be too, have been too shy to even say that to anybody. So I went to an apprentice at the Guthrie Theater, which was close to my house. And there was kind of okay because they knew by the fact that you were walking in that you wanted to be an actor. (laughs) You didn't have to explain (laughs) it to them. Okay. Um, and my mom had already raised my my brothers and sisters were all grown up and she basically said you got to go do what you want to do life is very short if you want to do that you need to go do it as a matter of fact when I got to New York I got a soap right away which is just the flukiest of flukes um, I called her and it was a pay phone because that was back in the day mm-hmm. and I said mom I want to come home <laughs> <laughs> just crying my eyes out. And she said to me in her best witch voice, she goes, you stick it out. <laughs> <laughs> and so I did. And, you know, in retrospect, she, we were very close and she was really lonesome when I moved, you know, out of, uh, you know, out of, away from her. And I didn't, see, she didn't, we didn't get to see each other nearly enough. And that was a very unselfish thing for her to do because she could have said, come on home. It's mm-hmm. okay to be a flop. You know, <laughs> get your job as a waitress or something. <laughs> That's how all the movies start. You know, many people have told me, my mother told me that she wanted me to stay home. And so I did. So, I mean, anybody who really wants to do this would have gone anyway. You know, is what, I, like, consolation is if you can talk somebody out of this, then that was the right thing to do was talk them out of it. Because this is right. hard. Um, if you can do something else, you should do it. Um, but I was lucky in the case that I didn't have to like have a rift with my mom or, you know, she hated me for going away and I had to prove something to her or anything. She just wanted things to work out for me. And that was very fortunate. Yeah. That's great to have that kind of support though. Cause yeah, it takes it that, perfect. that weight off of you. Yeah. Well, it did, there's another kind of weight though, which is you don't want to let them down. Right. Yeah. That's absolutely true. I hadn't thought about that. So, mm-hmm. I had cool. a patent stage, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what, um, are, you, are do you have any projects that you're working on right now, or are you just kind of... Oh, yeah. No, I have a lot of projects. I was in four um, documentaries this year, so I've got to be careful not to become a talking head. <laughs> 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 because I'm not, I'm not retired, damn it. <laughs> hey. So, yeah. I have a movie coming out called Exorcism at 60,000 Feet, which is a horror comedy. 
and I have a short. I, I have. I know there's another feature film that went the um, the video, the uh, film festival circuit and dances with films and many other ones called um, Blowing Up Now, and <laughs> and it's hmm. about I, I, a couple of apocalypse things because I think people think of me when they think of the end of the world because there's another one called A Well Respected Man and it, and it also features you know what if you get everything you want and then the world is going to end. Um, oh wow! And I'm just a mom in that one. I mean, that's the thing about getting older. Is I'm, you know, I'm somebody's mom in a lot of things, which is fine with me because, you know, you can, a mom is a mom. You can be as offbeat as you want as a mom. You know, you don't Absolutely. necessarily need to. Um, and what else do I have? I have something called um, <laughs> the video store, which is also going to be like an escape room eventually. Oh, and It's cool. about the 90s. Very vintage about the 90s and... um it's kind of like a minute. It's an alien story, which is I really had a good time making that. I have something else coming up uh, with some genre ladies, and then I have another thing coming up that's an HP Lovecraft thing that I'm going to be doing, where it's a people might not even recognize me in this one, <laughs> which is going to be fun. And then another thing where uh, it's kind of on the spiritual side, but but it's still a horror movie because. I'm worked like that. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I have, I have some things coming out, and, and I'm planning to do some other things. So um, I am a little bit busy, but I love being busy. Yeah, you know, that so. sounds like oh, you've got I, a real full schedule. And I, also, I forgot, I have a thing that has nothing to do with horror or sci-fi or anything like that. It's a, um, it's a short film. It's a comedy called um, Corky All Grown Up, and I play Corky. And it's a, a whole different thing. I'm like this, uh, um, a cougar in a little red oh. bathroom. And it, it was hilarious for me because it's different, you know. And I thought, oh, this is going to be great because I'm not a mom, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and there's nothing, I'm not running away from anything except for my feelings, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a normal, normal situation. And I thought, wow, that's really going to stand out <laughs> that's for cool. me. That's cool. That's hilarious. Yeah. I, I'd like to. I'd like to check out all those. Well, thank so, you. Once once they all come out, you know, everybody's got to go looking for them because those will be great. Thank you. And you know, uh, yeah. the whole um, apocalypse now kind of thing. That it, that's all the rage right now. The end of the world. The yeah. you know, it's the new zombie thing. Well, nineteen eighty four, which. You know, and everything's 1984, and that's exactly when I was doing all this stuff. I can't believe nobody's called me. But I am in the, the Superwoman um, 1984 in the teaser trailer. It uh-huh. shows me from and a scene from Chopping Mall waiting tables in the mall. But they didn't ask me if they could put it in. They didn't pay me for it. I don't. They're not going to leave it in. I, but it was just like vintage 80s that they wanted to demonstrate. I see. Um, so I'm still waiting. Maybe somebody will call me and say, my God, we just realized it's 1984 and you were there in 1984. So we want to put you in this. But so far, no one has done that. <laughs> <laughs> That's that, fine. that would be you know, cool, it's, though. It's 2019 and I don't, I'm, I'm not one to rest on my past credits. You know, it's just time for me to be who I am now. Yeah, I mean, you're definitely doing that. Like you said, you're not retired yet. You're still, it sounds like you're going strong. Yeah, well, I I would, I mean, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> of, course so, you, of course you are. So i got one more little question here for you. This is, uh, I've asked this one a few times before, and everybody always kind of has to think on it for a minute. So I'm, I'm curious if you've already put some thought to it, and you're just going to shoot out an answer. If a director were to come up to you and say, okay, look, I'm going to make a movie, but I'm going to make a movie that you want to be in. What would that movie be? Ooh. Well, that, yeah, that's, um, you know, I'm actually, I'm actually working on something where you answer three questions about, I'm um, creating your own content. Cause I'm moving towards that. Oh, I'm okay. I'm in the process of doing that right now. And there are three key questions. And if you can answer yes to every question, then it's a good idea. Oh, um, yeah, because nowadays you have to create your own content. You can't just sit around waiting for the phone to ring. I mean, you never could, but even less so now. Okay, that's fair. You have to get fair. out there and do, 
and make your own projects happen. Um, I mean, I was just, somebody just um, discussed the movie with me. It's a great character and everything, but it's like going to be a joint effort to raise the money. So I got to put my producer hat on. You know, I mean, we have to all have to have many hats now. We right. don't just get to be like, you know, what time do I show up and where's makeup? And where's the makeup? <laughs> it's not that anymore at all. And, you know, so we're making that adjustment. Most of my friends are producing things and, you know, they t- had to take the bull by the horns. I was a little slower to do it because I thought, I just want to be an actress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, I mean, a, that's so I've true, a, though. Nowadays, yeah, you can't I, do just one thing. I've been a producer, and it was a lot more fun just being the actress without worrying about the producer stuff. And unfortunately, you know, grow up, kid, because it, <laughs> you have to. You have to do everything now. Right. And you might end up you might end up getting somebody that is not as experienced as you would want them to be doing what it is that, that you had them there to do. And so you're going to have to know the language of how to tell them what you want them to do. And if you don't know what they're doing, you can't tell them how you want them to do it. So you basically have to know everything now. Gotcha. Wow. Mm-hmm. Dang. That, and with the way things are these days, that's probably a lot to try and keep straight. It is. It is. Um, because, you know, we don't use film anymore. Film is very expensive. Mm-hmm. Now, you can do this on your iPhone. I'm not saying you should do this on your iPhone, but you can do this on your iPhone. You get a lot of people who never realized that they needed to study lighting, cinematography, uh, you know, just just things that people had to know before they were allowed near film because it was so expensive. Now people just pick stuff up and, and shoot whatever they want, which can be great and can also be a nightmare if you if you then have to go back and, and go, oh, my gosh, we can't use this lighting. What are we going to do? Or, you know. Right. So, yeah, I mean, there's never a dull moment. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, well, uh, I think we can bring things around, um, kind of close things up here. And uh, before we do all of that, I kind of want to see if, do you have anywhere where people could go to kind of keep track of things and follow along, see when stuff comes out, that kind of stuff? Yes, I do. Thank you for asking. My website is kellymaroney.com, K-E-L-L-I-M-A-R-O-N-E-Y.com. I spell that because... People spell, spell my name all the time, mm-hmm. including when I was on True Blood, they got my name misspelled in the credits. And I'm thinking, oh, oh you no. Guys. Oh, you guys. So, anyway, that's my K E L L I M A R O N E Y. And I'm there on Instagram with my name, so it's easy to find me. Twitter, with just my name, easy to find me. On Facebook, um, I have actress Kelly Maroney and a uh, Kelly Maroney um, fan group. And let's see what else. That's, that's it, but that's good. I mean, I'm, there's ways to get a hold of me that way, for sure. Cool. But my website, it, it, it contains all those things, like links to all that other stuff, too. Oh, well, there and you go. One-stop shopping. Yeah, Pardon? <laughs> I said, yeah, well, exactly. There's a, there's a store there, and there's all current in, uh, articles and interviews and, and all that kind of stuff. So, yes. Heck, yeah. That's awesome. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, so I just want to say thank you very much for coming on the show and talking with me. It's been a privilege to hear your stories and I well, really you. had fun. What a nice thing to say. Thank you very much. I had fun too. That's I perfect. Thank you. Thanks That's for what inviting I'm me. <laughs> yeah, no problem. And if any time in the future you have something come up that you want to get out there, you know, come on back. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I'll probably take you up on that. Thank you a lot. And you know, before we before we close things down, I just want to say thank you to the listeners. You always keep this show going. It's because of people like you tuning in and listening that I keep doing interviews. So thank you very much, and we will see you all You're later. Welcome. It's because of people like you that I keep doing what I'm doing too. Because I'm nothing without them. So yeah, it's all about the fans. <laughs> yep. All yep. right. See you all later. <laughs> Bye.